Hi everyone, this is Sandra. Welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. Today's video is all about showing you what you can do without paying a pottery barn price and DIYing some projects for yourself. Most of the items that I have today in this video came from the thrift store. Some of them might be from the dollar stores, but most of the stuff is from my stash. I'm using my favorite permanent glue, which is weld bond glue, because it's not just a wood glue. It works for glass, ceramic, tile, plastic, you name it. So this is basically a permanent glue and it really holds up nicely and it actually sticks pretty quickly. So it cures in about 24 hours, but after about 10 minutes or so, you can actually work with your projects. So it's not like E6000 where it's still going to slide around a little bit. That's why I love it. And it is available in my Amazon store if you want to try it out. So I've got a bowl that was in my stash and this just came from one of my, my dollar stores. I've got a couple of pieces of these wood coasters. They came from the Dollar Tree at some point. There's little holes in them so they've actually already been used for a project and now I'm reusing them just to create a little bit of height because there's a dip in the bottom of the bowl. The next thing I'm going to be gluing on is the candlestick and you can see that it was originally a glass one. It was painted black, then it was painted white and then destroyed dressed so I am using everything that I have in my stash and just repurposing them. The little wood bowl is going to be the base at the bottom and this is what I'm trying to create. This is called a farmstead stoneware footed serving bowl and it retails for $59. I for sure thought that I could do this for way less and I'm probably spending only about maybe $8 on mine and that includes everything even the paint. Once it had sat for a couple of hours I took it outside and I gave it a couple of coats of white spray paint in just a satin finish. That just happens to be what I had in my stash. Before I did that though I did actually cover the inside with some newspaper and some painter's tape because I didn't want the inside to get any paint on it. I want that to still be able to be food safe. When you're doing projects like I am, I'm painting a lot, I'm investing in my tools and this brush is from Stallmeister and it's the pointed sash and it is my absolute favorite brush. I've tried different chalk paint brushes and just using regular dollar store brushes and I thought I'm going to give these a try and you know what I am not going back to any other type of brush. The bristles are so soft and you can even leave the paint on this for a couple of days just wrapped in plastic and the cleanup is still going to be as easy as if the paint was just being used. Warm water and the paint just slides right off the bristles. These are amazing. I do have a bunch of them listed in my Amazon store, but I highly recommend this brush in particular because it has all of the points at the top of it and it gets into all of the little cracks and crevices really easily. I did two coats of that paint that I showed you and I let it sit overnight to completely dry. Now I'm taking a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of water and I've put it in this glass and I've just mixed it together. And then I took my brush and just dipped it in the water and then drained off a lot of it. And now what I'm doing is just creating a stoneware texture and I'm going to show it to you up close in just a second. There it is. Look at that beautiful texture that you get just by tapping your brush a little wee bit. You get a bunch of speckles on there and it looks exactly like a stone finish. I'm going to continue doing this with the brown until I get the look that I like. I'm not going to go overboard with it. I just want to have some speckles all the way around. Then I'm going to switch over to some black acrylic paint. Again, just mix it with a tiny little bit of water, dip my brush in it, dragging my brush against the edge to get the majority of the water off and then tapping it against my project. And the look of it turned out exactly how I wanted it to. I'm so excited that this actually looks almost exactly like the same pattern and color and texture that's on the Pottery Barn one. 
let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. So here's the Pottery Barn one for $59, and here's mine, which probably cost me about $8. Yes, they look different, but I think I was pretty spot on with the color and the texture of the stone. I'm really happy with how mine turned out. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time, thanks so much for clicking on my video. If you like what you see so far, I'd love it if you could hit that red subscribe button and stick around a while. The second project that I have for you today is a wooden box makeover. Now, this one just has the little extra lip down at the bottom, but this was also a thrift store find. It's already been painted once, and I've used it a couple of times for different things, but now I'm going to make it over one more time. So I'm taking just some black chalk paint, and I'm going to give it one good coat. This is what I'm trying to recreate. Some reclaimed wood boxes, a set of three for $169. There's no way I would ever pay that price. I'm going to show you how you can get the look of reclaimed wood just using a few different colors of paint. So I've got my black, it's completely dry, and now I'm going to take this tan color, and these are just latex paints that I pick up, the little freebies and the discounted ones that you can get at the hardware store, and I'm just going to do some dry brushing with that color. And it's okay if I get a little bit of a darker look on it like if I get more of the tan color because I've got two other colors that I'm going on top of this yet to create the look that I'm going for. Once I have the first color on I like to go with a lighter touch and then I can always come back and darken it up and that's what I'm doing here. I'm using the same tan color but I'm adding a little bit more of the color to it just to bring out more of a wood grain look. Next color I'm using is a soft gray. It's sort of like a dove gray color. You can see the color on the cardboard there. That's where I'm getting the dry brushing from. I just blob a bunch of paint on my cardboard and then I just go ahead and use that for the dry brushing effect. And you can see that there's already a bunch of different colors showing up on this box. Next, I'm using some burnt umber just to give it more of a wood look, more of the brown. But then I noticed that it was just blending in a little bit too much. So I switched back to the tan color and added a little bit more of that on top of it. The final piece of the puzzle is going to be adding a little bit more of the black right on top again, just to bring out some of the brush strokes and make it look like wood grain. Here's another look at the Pottery Barn set for $169, and here's a look at mine. They are a little different. The shape of the, the, my box is different than what they have, and I probably could have used a little bit more brown, but I still think mine turned out great. In the summer, I found a set of four of these canisters, and I'm going to be using some hot glue just to add some textural lines to them, and this is what I'm trying to recreate. This is a beautiful vase. It's $139, and yes, it's terracotta, and the shape is different, but I thought I could recreate somewhat of the look just using this canister and a little bit of hot glue. It was great that the design on this canister had these grid lines, so I was very easily able to keep my lines straight, although they are a little bubbly here and there, but the texture on that vase was very not uniform either so I wasn't really worried about that. So I'm just going to continue making these lines with my hot glue and then just set it aside so they can fully cure. Again, I took it out to my garage, gave it a couple of coats of white spray paint just to help because when I'm putting my other paint on, I don't want that dark green to show through. So I've got some white chalk paint in a little cup here and I added just a splash of burnt umber because I wanted this to be more of a warmer white color and it turned out pretty good. Then I'm going to add a bunch of baking soda until I get the thickness and the texture that I want for this. 
I usually add about a half a teaspoon of baking soda at a time. I don't use any measurements. I just kind of throw it in there until I get the look of texture on the paint that I'm going for. I'm using just a regular dollar store brush to apply the paint. I don't like to use my expensive brushes when I'm using any type of texture like baking soda, simply because I don't want any of the grit to stay in my brushes. I'm going to give this two coats. So here's the Pottery Barn one again, and here is mine. They are different in shape. They are a little bit different in the color. I probably should have added a little bit more brown to my paint, but $139 for a vase when I spent $250, I think I like mine a lot better. If you ever go to the thrift store, check the kitchen area. There's always a ton of rolling pins. I don't think there's a lot of people nowadays who enjoy doing home baking, so you can always find some. And the older they look, the better they are for this project. I'm reusing a couple of ones that I'd done for Christmas. This one I had painted the handles red, so I'm just using some rough grit sandpaper and some muscle to get this off. And I always forget about my rotary tool. So I remembered about partway through this and thought, wow, I could just go ahead and use my rotary tool and sand all of this gunk off. I have this particular rotary tool listed in my Amazon store, and the reason I love it so much is that it's really easy to switch out all of the different attachments. Plus, you can add different attachments to it, like you could add a regular drill bit to it, like I've done here. And I'm just going to need to take that off and replace it with the sanding disc. So what I'm going to be doing then is just using the little wrench to open it up pull that off and pop the other one on. So simple to do. It really makes quick work of getting all of the paint off even better than with my regular sanding paper. So I'm going to continue to take the paint off of this one and then I'll do the other side as well. This is what I'm trying to recreate. These are some reclaimed wood decorative rollers. It's a set of four for $100. I got all of my rolling pins for about three or four bucks. Now, they're not these smaller ones that are really sweet, but I'm going to be on the lookout for some of these when I go thrifting next. My idea for the rolling pin itself, because it still looks fairly new, I'm going to use the same disc here and just sand off some of the finish on this just to give it a little bit more texture so when I do my finishing touch on it it will look a lot more rustic. To create an old and weathered look on the rolling pins I'm going to be using some black wax and this is from Bear and it's available at Home Depot. Now I'm going to just take a paper towel and I'm just going to start applying the wax and rubbing it in. I went really lightly to start and then I went over it again, making sure that I grabbed a little bit of extra wax on some of the areas where I had sanded just so it would get into all of those little rough spots and be a little bit darker. I love how this one turned out. This rolling pin is absolutely humongous. Let me know down in the comments if you know what this would have been used for. I think it probably would have been like an industrial baker kind of thing. One of the handles is already busted off and I did paint the other handle charcoal as you can see here. But I am going to take my rotary tool and just get some of that paint off. But I really like the look of this large one. It already has some dark spots and aged looks. So I'm going to leave this one as is and I'm not going to add any black wax to it. Again, here are the Pottery Barn ones, a set of four of these mini ones for $99. I've got some larger ones, but I think I did a pretty good job making them look a little bit more aged than they were. Mine were about $4 each. Here's a look at how all of my projects turned out. You'll have to let me know what you think of them.
Thanks so much for spending some of your time with me today. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up and don't forget about the notification bell. You won't want to miss out on anything else I have to share. Bye for now. <music>